What is good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Joshua from Bears Reviews, and welcome to the final episode of the Valiant Cinematic Universe uh, series I've done for these past three months as a part of my monthly pitch series. If you don't know what the monthly pitch series is, every single month I give a pitch to a random thing of film or TV, and I give, give you what I would do with that project. Today, as I said at the start, it is the final episode. We are in phase three of the Valiant Cinematic Universe. If you saw phase one and phase two, you are, you're already caught up, but if you have not already seen it, go check out those other videos. Phase one released, on Feb, released in February, phase two released last month in March, and now we are here in phase three for April. And um, I'm not gonna delay any, more, any longer. If you guys are new to the channel and you been in, if, and if you enjoyed this video and you are and you want to see more of my pitches i have a whole playlist full of pitches from the last few months um and if you want to be up to date with all of my new uploads make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you never miss another one of my videos without further ado let's get into it with project number one of phase three uh our first show of the season of, of the phase tall called time walker season one this season would follow the third and final Pata brother named ivar as we see his ability to uh, finding time arcs, which essentially send him across time, whether, but the problem is he doesn't know at what points of time he will end up in. Um, Ivar is the third brother of, 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 um, he's the third brother of the, uh, Pater brothers. Um, the first one being the Eternal Warrior, who we've met a few times already. The second one being Armstrong, and now the Time Walker is the third one. Um, the main bulk of the season would follow Ivar trying to find his wife, Nila, um, who he met at, who in her timeline, in, in Nila's time, she uh, met a few years prior to the event of all of everything that's been happening this whole show, the, the, this entire universe. Um, and uh, um, this season wouldn't necessarily have a villain per se. Um, Time Walker would be just jumping from different points in history, but um, at the but Nila would also be uh, a certain villain in, in the sense of she is obsessed with time travel in learning how to find uh, the love of her life. She create she in, she inadvertently creates time travel, and she tries to use time travel to find uh, Ivar, which has some drastic uh, uh, attack, drastic measures for the for the timeline. Um, in the end, Time Walker defeats or not so defeats, but he stops uh, Nila from creating any more time arcs that uh, should be used. And the ending of the season would have Ivar accidentally travel to the future to see both of his brothers dead, something that he never thought he'd see, and sees that a war is coming and it makes and he makes his mission to stop this event from happening. This has been an event that I've been teasing essentially since we first met the Eternal Warrior, and it'll be like the final project of the whole uh, phase of the whole universe, and we'll get to that in a minute. The second uh, project in Phase 3 is a film called The Renegades. This film would follow Peter Stanchek, a character we met in Phase 1 of the universe, who we have not, who at this point would have had at least one cameo in, in another project. I don't know what project that would be, but he would mainly, we wouldn't have mainly have mentions of him through Livewire. But this film, this film would follow, follow Peter as he discovers that someone by the name of Enfuego is hunting down Harbingers, superpowered individuals more specifically, um, that's what they are called, and is and is activating their powers against their will, um, whether that will kill them or not, because the abilities of um, Harbingers can be unlocked through times of stress, and what's more stressful than being hunted down by a superpowered individual? Um, uh, yeah, so he's so he's hunting uh, Harbingers down, and he, and Peter believes that this is not right. He doesn't believe that. Uh, harbingers should be forced to have their powers be unleashed they should happen naturally so he def he decides to put a team together of other harbingers consisting of torque uh, a harbinger who is able to project uh, holograms in himself um zephyr uh, a girl who's able to fly flamingo uh, a harbinger who is able to to control and generate fire and chris hathaway who who is peter's love interest but who doesn't have powers but is very smart she's like the tactical leader um of the group um, together, the team, they take down Enfuego, and they have a found family within each other. This would kind of be, like, my version of, like, the Guardians of the Galaxy, where it's, like, a bunch of kids, a bunch of people who really do not have anything to do with one another, but they're just brought together to stop, being, stop this guy from hunting people like them, and then they find a family within one another. Uh, the third project in Phase 3 is called Bloodshot Island. This would be the sequel to the Bloodshot movie that we got in Phase 2. 
Um, this film would follow Bloodshot as he's taken hostage by the Bloodshot Squad, a squad that became active after Morris's death to hunt down Bloodshot. The team consists of Bloodhound, Blood Squirt, a Quiet Man, Viet Man, Cold Man, and Tank Man. All variants of Bloodshot that all variants of people who have gone through who've gone through the um the the Bloodshot program. Uh, I forgot the name of it off the top of my head. We've all gone through the program, and each of them have were used at different points of war. Um, and after Morris's death, they were activated um, and and began to hunt down uh, Bloodshot. Um, the film would end with Bloodshot killing all the members except for Bloodhound, as he grew fond of the dog, having Bloodhound being like uh, Bloodshot's uh, companion. The fourth project in Phase 3 would is uh, Armstrong and Archer Season 2. The villain of the season would be a man named General Redacted. This season would follow Armstrong and Ar Archer as they are being hunted by General Redacted, a misguided general who is hell-bent on keeping America safe um, and believing that Armstrong, Armstrong and Archer are communists. He has that old, old mindset. Um, the season would end with Armstrong having a vision from a geomancer telling him to reunite with his brothers, obviously teasing the fact that something big is coming that would need all three of the of the Powder Brothers to reunite. And the fact that in this time, in the way that I have this, it's been probably over a thousand years since the three of them have been together, or the three of them have seen all each other at once. Uh, the sixth project, in, uh, sorry, the fifth project in um. Uh, in Phase 3 would be Shadow Man End Times, and the villain would be Master Dark. This is a sequel to Shadow Man. The film would follow uh, Shadow Man receiving warnings from the dead side that Master Dark is beginning to weaken the barriers between the worlds of life and death. Um, Jack would travel to the dead side, which is a world that we spent a majority of the film in because I felt like that's that would be such an interesting world for us to explore. Um, and this this would mainly dive into more of a horror film, horror aspect of it, as we would learn more about the uh, like the origin of Master Dark and how he obtained his abilities and how he um, has ties to um, uh, Jack's father. And um, yeah, the film would end with Jack defeating Master Dark and beginning to feel something dark is coming. All right, sorry guys, one one moment. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I had to speak to my uh, grandmother for a second. Uh, okay, so that was uh, Project uh, 5 of the universe. And now we have our final project, the conclusion to the entire... Uh, no, sorry. No, uh, the, the second to last project, sorry. We have Project uh, number 6 called The Eternal Warrior Season 3. This season would follow Jalad as he's training Kay with her Geomancer abilities. And this sh this season would basically have us learn more about the, the, the enemy of... Of, of the coming uh, war, um, and it would have the all three of the Pada brothers reunite and realizing that something big is coming. Um, the Eternal Warrior would have visions of of catastrophic events, and he knows that an enemy known as the Immortal Enemy is coming. The show would end with Jalot and his brothers Armstrong and Ivar all reuniting, knowing that they need to prepare to fight the the uh, a being known as the Immortal Enemy. Which has a long history with, um, with uh, Jalad, as we will learn momentarily. So now we are down to our final project of the universe, titled "The Unity: The Immortal Enemy." This one will be the culmination of the whole universe, as we see the Unity, the Renegades, Shadow Man, Armstrong and Arch Archer, and the Time Walker all uniting to fight up to fight off against the Immortal Enemy. We would learn through through Jalad in flashbacks that in all the life Jalad has lived. He has faced the immortal enemy three different times, and each time the immortal enemy has killed the geomancer, a geomancer, he has he was sent to protect. And every single time a geomancer dies, it, ma it marks it marks the fall of a civilization, meaning that it, every single time that the immortal enemy has has killed a previous geomancer, a, a, a whole civilization would fall. It would mean the end, the end of the world. Basically, some of the biggest catastrophic events that have happened in history would were caused because of a geomancer's death. So. We would have flashbacks of Pompeii, where we would see Jalad try to fight the immortal enemy um, and fail to, to defeat it. When when it kills the immortal, when it kills a geo that that at that time that geomancer, it ended up creating the events of Pompeii, which with Mount Vesuvius, with Mount Vesuvius completely killing everyone in causing the. I don't want to say iconic, but but the memorable uh, event of Pompeii. 
Um, and we would see through other through other flashbacks of just horrible events that have happened throughout civilization throughout the years, and just how big of a th- excuse me, with how with just how much big of a threat the mortal enemy is, and how difficult it is for Jalad to defeat him. And and he finally in this film we finally see him have some confidence that um have some confidence in being able to finally defeat the mortal enemy just because of how difficult it is to defeat it. Um, the film would show the death of Shadow Man, Peter Stanchek, Exo Man of War, and Flamingo, as because I feel like um, we would need to. Shadow Man would be someone who would think that maybe by trapping the immortal enemy in um, like darkness in in the dead side, maybe that could keep it uh, like uh, trapped. But in the end, he fails, and the the immortal enemy kills him. Um, Peter Stanchek, he is in this universe. He's tied with. Um, uh, uh, with uh, 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 with Toyo to be one of the strongest telepaths in the world. So um, the immortal enemy would obviously see that as a threat and kill him. Exo Man of War, it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, the suit is designed as like a world destroyer. So maybe um, so maybe the immortal enemy saw this as a threat and it would easily defeat him. Some of the most powerful members in this team in, in this whole lineup would be killed. These four being like the main ones that we see get killed. Um, and just seeing how everything that all these characters have been through has been culminating to this final battle for basically the whole world. Because they've each of them have faced individual villains throughout their time, and but they all agree that a threat as big as the immortal enemy has been something that they've never in their life have faced. Um, the film would end with Jalad sacrificing himself to end the immortal enemy and saving the world, ending and ending having Geomancer K. Um, ending up with her having the final blow on the immortal enemy, finally ending the immortal enemy and ending that endless cycle that um, it was born to have, meaning that it will that the role of the geomancer will continuously be in the way that she was chosen, where Kate was chosen, where the geomancer simply just chooses who is, who should be who is worthy of the abilities of life on Earth. Um, we learned that the immortal enemy is now been killed. And its cycle will now end and no longer hunting geomancers every few thousand years. Because that that was the thing that the immortal enemy would do. We would see, we would, we would, there would be a, a post-credit scene where we see all the characters come together to honor the fallen heroes that we had. Obviously, Shadow Man, Peter Stanchek, uh, Exo Man of War, Flamingo, and, and the Eternal Warrior. Um, and the film would have a post-credit, the film would end with the unity consisting of Livewire, Bloodshot, Archer, um... Uh, 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 why am I blanking out on the other members' names? Um, Torque and and Time Walker, all five of them coming together to form the new unity because we obviously need to have a, a new unity in this lineup. And in the end, the, the world looks bright for the Valiant Cinematic Universe. And there you go, that is my pitch for phase three. This was definitely the shortest one of all of, all of the three phases. This was just primarily because I didn't. Like with all these other characters, with all these other projects, I really did not know what to do with the characters and stuff because a villain like the Immortal Enemy, that's not a villain that is really um, known about. But I did my research as much research as I could, and the Immortal Enemy was just someone I kind of wanted to work with. I, I and Master Dark was another option I could have gone with, but I just felt like because he's more tied to Shadow Man, I just felt like he would, he would have been the best option. But there you have it. That is my pitch for Phase Three of the Valiant Cinematic Universe. Three months of my life have been dedicated to this ser- to this trilogy. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed me talking about this very underappreciated universe, and I really hope that, like, at some point, someone will give the Valiant Cinematic Universe, the Valiant Comics, their own time to shine. I know that in 2020 they tried to do that with um, the Bloodshot movie with Vin Diesel. I know they tried to start something up with that film, but because it just really bombed at the box office and no one really liked it i felt like it was it was dead from the jump so i thought maybe i give my own pitch and who knows maybe at some point i'll have an opportunity to make my own to make this into reality i don't know i i would definitely feel like this would be something i'd be interested in doing i don't know we definitely need to have i I would definitely have a lot of these characters have more time in the comics before taking them to the big screen just purely because of Sorry about that, guys. My phone was being uh, my phone was being annoying with someone trying to call me from Jersey. I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone from that. Regardless, um, back to what I was saying. I would focus 
uh, my first step would obviously try to have these characters stand more in the spotlight of the comics, have them more of a have each character have more of a road gallery, have them have us learn more about these characters in the comics, and then when the time is right to bring them to the big screen, I would obviously do that. But overall, I think this was, a, in my opinion, a very strong start for what could possibly be something that could happen in the future. Would I actually follow through with this universe? Maybe. Uh, there would definitely be some changes I would make in the future, but overall, I think, I, I think this was a solid pitch for what I could do with a three-phase cinematic universe. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought of this pitch of this of the phase three pitch and of the all three phases as a whole did you guys enjoy this um did you not enjoy this let me know down in the comments what you thought next month is going to be uh we're going to change it up we're not doing any more valiant com comics stuff um it's going to be a, a, a change of pace with uh with uh with the pitch um i if my memory serves me right it will be my first time pitching a no that's not right no it'll be my second time pitching a tv show and um it's going to be very fun i'm very excited for it um it's kind of stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit because i'm diving into something else where i'm not too well versed in but all i will say is that it, will, it it's going to be a fun way for me to learn more about this universe um but anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video once again make sure you chuck a like on this video and hit the subscribe button so you won't miss another one of my monthly pitch videos thank you guys so much for watching i'm joshua from Rage reviews and i'll see you all next time bye bye